And then he says, watch what he does here. He says, show me the tax money. And so they brought him a denarius. Now, he says, show me the tax money. Who, who has a coin? And this is a funny thing for Jesus to say here. Now, the text doesn't tell us who produced the coin. Uh, presumably, a Pharisee pulls a coin out of his pocket, but we can't say for sure. But someone that is there has this coin, pulls it out. And, and it's funny because you weren't allowed to have Roman coins in the temple. Because the Roman coin had the image of Caesar on it, just like how we have like George Washington on our quarters and so on. And to the Jews, having an image of a person was considered idolatry. Especially a, a pagan king, a Caesar. And so you weren't even allowed to have a Roman coin in the temple because it was considered idolatrous. But when Jesus said, who's got a coin? Someone pulls a Roman coin out of their pocket. And not only that, by possessing a Roman coin, they were demonstrating that they were subjugated to Caesar. They're using his money. They're in his system. And, and so they tried to trap Jesus with their question about paying tribute to Caesar. And Jesus trapped them with his question, well, who's, who's got a coin? Oh, I, I do. Well, there you go. Now we know what you think about this whole thing. This is like if someone came up to you and said, tell us, what do you think? Should Christians smoke or not? And you say, well, show me a cigarette. Oh, OK. <laughs> I guess you think that Christians should smoke because you've got a pack of smokes. <laughs> this is why Jesus called them hypocrites. You're phonies. It's not a genuine question. You're fakers. They don't really care about this issue. If they did, they wouldn't have a Roman coin. They're just trying to trap him so they can destroy him. And so someone hands him a denarius, a Roman coin that was used to pay this tribute money. And by the way, a denarius was only a day's wage. So it's not like it was this huge tax that they had to pay. But it, it was it was just the, the insult of it. Just you have to you have to give this to Caesar as a way of acknowledging that he is your king and he has conquered you. And so someone hands him a denarius. And then he holds the coin up, verse 20, and he says to the crowd, whose image and inscription is this? And they said to him, maybe the whole crowd says it, Caesar's. And he said to them, look what it says, render, therefore, to Caesar the things that are Caesar's and to God the things that are God. God's now it's interesting if you're taking notes, the word render here, it means to give back or to pay back. It speaks of a debt that is owed or an obligation or a responsibility. It's not something that is optional. Caesar made that coin. Caesar put his image on it. So give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. If Caesar asks for his coin that he made, give it back to him, Jesus says. He made it. It belongs to him. He's asking for it. So you have an obligation to give it back to him. That's what he's saying here, which, by the way, this is a this is a strong statement from Jesus affirming that we should pay our taxes. We should pay our taxes to the government. And this is reaffirmed several times in the New Testament, especially Romans chapter 13, first Peter chapter two, for example, uh, Romans chapter 13, verse seven says, render, therefore, to all their due taxes to whom taxes are due. Customs to whom customs are due, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. So we have an obligation to pay our taxes. Now, the question that many Christians struggle with is, what if the government uses our tax money to fund ungodly or wicked things? Should we still pay our taxes? Because our money is going towards ungodly things. 
we still pay our taxes out of obedience to God. Because God tells us in his word to pay our taxes. And, and so, so we do it out of obedience to the Lord. And it's not, it's not our responsibility what the government does with our money. Now, of course, you can get involved in, in, in politics and elections and voting so that we elect people that will use our money in a godly way. But we're to pay our taxes, and that, that responsibility of what is done with it is it's not on us. It's on those government officials. And, and I would just point out also, keep in mind, Jesus says to this crowd of Jews here that they have an obligation to pay this tax to the Roman government. He says this knowing the Roman government will nail him to a cross and kill him in just a few days. So there's ever a time that, you know, you should rebel against you know, paying taxes, uh, this would probably be it. But he says you have an obligation to pay it to a government that will kill the Son of God and the Savior of the world in just a few days.